So after the trials in 2015, where we definitely knew that stroke treatment worked, it was effective. But all of those trials were done in the developed world. So they were done in Europe and North America and Australia. The challenge then is to try and move that stroke treatment into low income, middle income countries. And um, I, th I think that's the next advance that's taking place. How do you see that developing? Well, again, we have to go through the same process of showing that it's effective because there's a lot that goes to stroke treatment, not just what happens in the intervention lab, but what happens before. It's getting patients to hospital on time, and that involves education, it involves infrastructure, and that's obviously not as developed in low-income and middle-income countries. But to some degree, it's, it's a, the same type of problem. It's a awareness and a logistic problem, though. And an economic problem. Yes, of course. Yeah, Snow, uh, stroke treatment's expensive. So we need to show that it works and that it's affordable, that it's worth doing. How does the, I know that in some of the later trials you start extending the time window when, when mechanical thrombectomy is possible. Yeah. How does that impact on a, a developing world that must have certain advantages? Well, I think there's, there's two sides to that. One, it's an advantage for us because we, we have that longer time window where we know things work, so we don't have to confine ourselves to six hours. The other side of it is if you look at the trials, the Hermes trial collaboration, the further out you go, the less chance of getting a, an independent outcome. So then the cost effectiveness starts to, to reduce. So that's what you need to try and do, is find that balance. And how can you do that in the developing world? I mean, how do you convince people that this is worth doing when there are other things that appear to be more uh, demanding? Yeah, I, th I think that's a big challenge. So there's, we're looking at our data in South Africa. We just finished our outcome studies, which are looking promising. Mm. Brazil has just finished a big multi-center trial. Uh, I don't know the results yet. I think they're going to be presented here. And Southeast Asia is also looking at their outcomes, which I think are favorable. So that's the first part, is, is getting that right. Then you can start to, to use that to make the argument that this is something worth doing. It's a complicated ethical argument. And there's no answer. You know, when it comes to rationing resources in healthcare, even the best ethicists struggle. Because whichever utilitarian, egalitarian argument you're going to use to, to make your point, it's still difficult to justify spending on one thing over another. And when it comes to disability, it's whether you're looking at the cost, the economic cost, the actual dollars spent mm -hmm. in a healthcare system or whether it's the human cost of suffering, somebody looking after another person and how, how do you put a value to that? That's going to be the difficulty I think is... The very vitality of the society itself. Yeah. But yeah. how do you approach that? Is there, on a less um, cost, um, less heavy for the terms of cost, I would imagine education can be done Education to a population. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, again, with stroke, it's a multifaceted thing mm. because, yes, we want to focus on mechanical thrombectomy and get patients to hospital mm. rapidly. But from a public health perspective, prevention in low income countries is a huge issue because it's a lifestyle issue for many people. We still have high incidence of smoking, uh, poor diet with too much sugar, we've got a high incidence of diabetes. If you could correct those things, mm. the incidence of stroke would be, would be lower. I think meetings like this, we tend to focus on, on other issues, right? right. And, and they're important issues, the treatment issues. Uh, the public health issues uh, happen to be more important for people working in those environments where I have to justify spending a large amount of money on treatment right. where I've got a public health official saying, well, shouldn't we be spending that money on prevention? Maybe. Link provides you with a, a tool to do something. 
But that's only one part of the equation. Sure, sure. But I think that's, that's part of the pleasure of doing a job like we do, right? Is you're supposed to have this broad perspective on, on healthcare, not, not just focus on one aspect. It's what makes it interesting. Do you have any closing remarks? Yeah, once again, I'm, I'm very happy to be here because this is the thing that's most enjoyable for me is actually treating patients. Uh, uh, I chose to do this rather than be a public health care official. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>